So I wanted to show you guys uh, kind of a cool way to use some path lights. So <clears throat> I'm sitting in a fire pit area here, but there's all kinds of stone around me. And uh, although we have some nice rock features behind us and some things we could light up, we're probably not gonna be able to get lights into the into the stones to be able to properly and effectively light those up. So one of the options often that a lot of people will do is they'll just surround the whole area with path lights. The problem with that is that I almost guarantee you if it's a sitting area that people are gonna be hanging around, um, your path lights are gonna get knocked over or somebody's gonna trip on them, and spill a spill a rum and coke on you, so, something like that is gonna happen. So. A cool uh, concept and a cool thing that we do sometimes is with these big flower pots like this. Um, these flower pots usually have like a big drainage hole in the bottom. They'll actually run wire underneath and through and then we'll actually place a path light inside the flower pot. And what's cool about this is a couple things. Is One, um, not only do you get that path light a little bit higher up, because what that does is it spreads the lights a little bit further. So if you want to make a path light um, illuminate a larger area it's not so much that you get a brighter bulb in it it's that you get it a little bit higher up so by doing that we're gonna illuminate a larger uh, a larger path or a larger area than we would if we had it in the ground the other thing that's gonna happen it's gonna illuminate whatever we got inside that big flower pot so if we've got some nice flowers and some things we want to feature like that then it's gonna highlight those and the other thing it does it gives us the ability to kind of put that light wherever we want so if we decide later that we want to move this flower pot by 10 feet or 15 feet or put it in a different area well then we can easily go and do that because we're going to leave some extra wire at the bottom of the pot and all we got to do is drag our flower pot now to wherever we want it so on a patio area like we have here what we're doing is we got three of these big flower pots we're basically going to put them in each corner we're going to really accent them highlight them a little bit and then just give ourselves a little bit of extra perimeter lighting uh, down below on the surface of the fire pit area. So it's a cool way to use path lights and giant flower pots to illuminate different areas. Yeah, so the easiest way to bury your wire, you know, a lot of guys ask, should I get some kind of machinery or something like that? I mean, if you have open dirt area and it's a brand new project and you want to trench the wire in, you can definitely do that, uh, but realistically, a flat spade like this, um, I find goes a lot quicker than anything. And basically you just jam it in the ground, loosen up the soil a little bit, so you can get that wire, you know, a good six to eight inches down there. Uh, and I just use a simple little tool like this. I don't even know what it's called. Um, it's basically like a long screwdriver that's got a couple prongs. But I can just push that wire deep down into the grass and get it nice and nice and far down there so I don't got to worry about it coming up. I don't got to worry about it getting hit by anything. Um, and I'll save you a lot of trouble having to go rent equipment and so on. So the last thing I'm going to talk about transformer wise is how to make it um, more effective or what I like to call a smart transformer or a Wi-Fi based transformer. It's really easy to do. If you have a transformer like this, um, you know, there's usually an option for a photo cell. I don't like to use photo cells because then you got to be careful where you put that transformer. If it's in a shaded area, your lights are going to be on all the time and photo cells typically fail um, quite. Uh, quite frequently so I don't like to use them so I usually don't even worry about that but what you will find is a lot of times you'll have a plug in here and what that's for is to put some kind of timer so what you can do with that is you can get pretty much any kind of timer you can even get like a, a Christmas lights uh, uh, timer that you plug in and you basically plug it into there and then you plug that into the bottom so for example if you can see here we're using a Wi-Fi timer and the only reason we plug it into here as opposed to in here is just there's not enough room in this box. Um, but you can use virtually any outdoor Wi-Fi timer and plug it in there, plug that in, and then you can operate it uh, wirelessly. 
Uh, what we do with this one is just because it doesn't fit in here real well, uh, we just plug that in, we plug the transformer into here, and basically what we do is we just bypass um, the transformer and we time everything with this via a simple app. Um, this one is from uh, Wyon, but there's lots of other ones. So if you have a smart home system, it might be worth checking out if they have an outdoor Wi-Fi plug. Um, because then you can use that and you can have your lights working on the same smart home system that you already have. I like this one because uh, I know it works well outdoors. You know, we're in Calgary, Canada where it gets down to minus 40 and I know it still works. Um, so I like that one. I like the fact that it has its own app. Uh, so it's very easy to operate. I don't need any special hubs or anything. And it works with Alexa so you can just tell your lights to come on, which is kind of a cool feature as well.